everyone, it's Nick here, 45 Degree Sailing. Welcome to our review of the Dufour 460 Grand Large. Now this boat is currently in charter with Noah Yachting out of Marina Karstella near Split, Croatia. And we've spent the day on her, checking her out, sailing, relaxing, cooking on her, serving. It's been really, really enjoyable. And I'm putting this boat down as a really good option for that mid-sized to large family or a group of six, eight, six to eight friends. She's a really nice boat. For 46 feet, I think she's got a lot to offer. Okay, so we've had a great day on the DeFore. So starting at the back of the boat, this is a twin helm, twin helm set up at the back here and it's, it's rear platform area is, it's a bit complicated, but it worked very well. So you've got these um, hingeable and also on a, um, on a gas powered uh, strut as well. So they, they're easy to lift and they hold up, but these seats at the back and covers for the sink area, the barbecue and the seat just hinge up like this and create a lot of space going down. You then have the swimming platform or the back platform that lowers down. Uh, now this is manual at the moment, but the owners of the boat have told me that they are putting, uh, making this electric for the season. So that will go in in a week or two. And then the swimming platform area is really nice with another roll down step to make it all that much nicer at the bottom. Also giving it quite a lot of storage around the back there for the life raft, the ladder, and then the shower, the cockpit shower is also in there. So nice setup in the back um, and it worked, worked really well. I also liked that I went down to cut the bread on the back step and being able to stand down there and the height that the barbecue or the wash basin is at or with the, the seat down on it is a really nice working area. So if you were cutting fish or working at the barbecue, you're standing at the back off the boat, which makes more space up here, which I really liked. I thought that was a, that was a cool feature. Coming through with the equipment here, there's not a heap of electronic equipment on this boat, which I'm actually a fan of anyway. A lot of screens kind of get distracting. So you've got Raymarine electronics on both sides, just the, the small displays, and then you have a chart plotter as well. Now in this shot, I haven't found the brightness on this shot yet, but I've just uh, checked it out afterwards and it, the brightness comes up on both the displays. Now very easy to see outside in the sun. Compass on both sides and your throttle control and bow thruster is on the starboard side. Volvo controls for the engine, everything worked really nicely. The boat was really, really nicely controlled in forwards and reverse. There was a little bit of a shutter at around about 12, 1300 revs, but that evens out, <clears throat> evens out pretty quick, so it's not a problem. Cruising speed under motor, the boat was doing around about 7.5 knots at 2000 revs. Uh, we didn't put the bimini over today because it's, a, it's a, uh, March here and it was a beautiful sunny day and we, as you can see I got a bit of sun on the water. But the bimini comes over really nice and strong. The Dodger was very good and easy to work under when we were raising sails. There was plenty of headroom there but that folds forward as well like normal. And nice big, big bright hatches going down into the aft cabins which I really liked. These lockers flip up and you've also got this extendable seat to make it a larger sitting area larger sitting area out here, out here so that you can lounge on this with a cushion which is really nice. <clears throat> Forward on the boat was pretty standard, uh, really nice wide walking platforms around the sides so really easy to move around and nothing to trip on. This boat also has the self tacking jib so there was nothing getting in the way as far as blocks and sheets down the sides of the boat and really easy to move around. I found the boom and mainsail set up really also quite easy to deal with it's not that high so one you get a bit more sail area and two it was easy for me to just stand on the coach roof and undo or do up the mainsail bag I'm finding on a lot of boats these days that have a much higher boom doing up that bag is really quite hard and um, which often leads a lot of people to just leave it so you're not doing up your sail bag overnight but this was really easy to get to and the bag was in really good condition I like that there's only two winches on the boat in under here, two primary winches, and they house everything. Now one thing that was slightly annoying is the main sheet 
and the jib sheet are both on the port side. I think it'd be much nicer if we rigged one of those on starboard so that at least then you could control your jib sheet and your main sheet at the same time in your trimming. That would be much better uh, layout for me because it was a little bit annoying to go, right, I'll ease my main, now I'll ease my jib and having to swap winches like that. So a little something from me that says, hey, if we rig that on the other side, one of those on the other side, that would be a lot better. Okay, we've been out now. It's been very calm all morning, so we've just been motoring up towards the island of Braj. We are now in about 8 to 12 knots of wind, and we are going to test this to 4460 out. So, here we go. We're going to put some sails up and enjoy the day. Up she goes. Yep. Yeah, boop, 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 boop. Sailing wise, she felt really good and balanced. We had a couple of beginners on the helm today, a couple that had only done a little bit of sailing, and I didn't really have to tell anyone anything. We set full mainsail, full jib, there was only about 12 knots of wind, and it just got up and went. We were sailing at about five knots, really just superb, superb sailing. Um, it went up wind really nicely, the jib, and the mainsail both look relatively new. Uh, remembering this is filmed in March 2019, so the mainsail feels like new and the jib really nice shape as well. So they were cut really good. As I was saying, self-tacking jib and that pulls in really tight and flat as well. It didn't have a big, big curve to it if I didn't want a big curve to it. So I like that. As long as you can trim them right, then I'm okay with the self-tacking jibs. In the cockpit here, there was plenty of room. There was uh, two or six of us on board today and it didn't feel at all crowded. In fact, I think we had plenty of space for more people. Um, and at lunch here, as you can see, we were all sat around the back, um, around the cockpit table and everything went absolutely fine. One thing I wanted to pay note to is the forward locker on this is really large. Fit all of the fenders in there with heaps of room to spare. Good ladder down into it, heaps of space. Um, and the anchor setup on this boat has got a really nice guide on it. Okay, the guide is very efficient and it works so well. So you can just bring your anchor up. Obviously, be careful, like always, with any anchor coming up. But it just comes straight up. It self writes itself into the into the position, really easy. And I miss that on a lot of boats where you're often toying with the anchor control down, up, down, up to get it twist in the right position. This one, straight up every time. Good work. Also, just flipping back, the barbecue on this has got a gas-powered barbecue at the back here. We didn't end up using the barbecue on the back today because we had a lot of vegetarians on board and I'd only brought meat for it. So that is there though, really nice setup. I like the height as I said earlier and it looks like a superb, superb design to just put the meat on and have a nice barbecue off the back. All lines and controls are coming right back into the cockpit here. Uh, one thing I noticed when we were furling in the head sail, I'd really like to have like a block or something mounted down there after that clutch so that you could, if you really needed to, you could run it up to one of the top winches or just to give a bit of extra purchase on that because it's quite hard to pull. As you can see here, we used a two-man system to pull this in, which was really easy. One sweating up halfway up the boat and the other one tailing at the back with the clutch closed and it came in really easily but it would be nice to know that if I needed to maybe single-handed if I could get a block put on one of these rings and run it up to the winch then I could winch it in if I needed to or if I was reefing on the go I find it would be quite hard to pull that in for a reef. All right, that's the most part out here. Okay. The feedback from the galley is that the storage in here is really great. We've got all of this storage above the galley bench and sink. We've also got the storage below, of course, and then with the double fridge and this storage and working area here is great. Also, I know Mahina really likes to have this alcove behind the sink and the stove so that you can slot things down there. You're not going to slide and fall down cracks or anything like that. Also, and I remember the first before, I checked out, I didn't know how this worked. This slides down this side. I was getting all annoyed because there was nowhere to slide it down the back and I was doing it wrong. So great to have these working bench tops that go over top of the stove so that you've got much more bench space to work with. 
The downstairs is one of our favorite layouts in yachts, which we often go for, which is the four double cabins and four heads. The aft cabins, double cabins, really open and bright from those uh, hatches in the roof and the ones that lead out to the cockpit as well. And plenty of storage in the cupboards here. Also, good power sockets, all right? I was getting annoyed at some other boat designers for not putting enough power sockets in boats. Plenty of power sockets in here, I like it. Forward cabins, really nice for forward cabins. They are a little tighter being on a 46 foot yacht. This isn't as big as the um, other cabins, but definitely still doubles for two adults. I think you can fit in there. Also because of the amount of storage. I really like the drawers underneath the bed and this big um, storage area where you can slide a suitcase into and you don't have to access it from getting under your bed. So really nice design there. Thank you, Defour. We like that one. Now, and there wasn't a lot of wind today, so here's a little bit more sailing. We sailed this boat earlier in the year, uh, no, last November as well, and it was a bit windier that day. So here's some of the footage from sailing her in about 15 to 30 knots. Alright, that is it for the Dufour 460 Grand Large review. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel to get our latest videos that are coming out. If you have any comments or questions about the boat, please put them below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now remember this yacht Ezra, the Dufour, is in charter with Noah Yachting. Now Noah Yachting you can get in touch with through their website, noahyachting.com, and maybe you'll use this for your next sailing holiday. Great boat, great time. Thank you very much everyone and we'll see you in the next one.